That's my BMW X5. I'm dealing with the notorious dry shaft problem front. The splines are stripping. Mine fortunately hasn't gone out all the way. So it's just starting on the inclines. If you give it like a normal acceleration throttle, it'll you'll hear it trying to slip. So you gotta baby it off the line and once it gets going, it's good, but the biggest thing is, is mine is uh, not stripped out all the way yet, so it'll still have some of those threads be useful, but what I got is the one inch extension, so I'll be cutting right before that weld right there and welding on the new one inch long, longer spline front shaft piece or rear whatever you want to call it so now we're just trying to get it out I shouldn't say we I am here's an upside down view of it so these are kind of uh, a pain to get out only because they get in the rubber and uh, the nut is off of this one but because of the rubber it's kind of stuck in there and so what I'm going to do is put a smaller wrench behind the nut here and then take a mallet. Also I may take a ratchet and turn it because it's gripping the rubber in here. And then we're going to do all that, get the shaft out. Also we're going to be pulling this, this uh, guibo, whatever they call this. For the vibrations, gonna pull this off as well. Hopefully, make the room to put the new longer um, shaft in once I weld that piece in, which will be an inch longer. So, with this out of the way, hopefully, it'll be able to go in and then we'll slide this in behind it. We'll see. I'll set up the camera for all that. It's got to get this bolt out. I got this one, and then I'll only have to rotate it once to get that top one. I'm gonna do those first and then um, I'm gonna try to get these as well. I'm gonna try to get that one and this one broke free so then I only have to turn it one time. <laughs> kind of works out good if you can get two at the bottom so then you don't have to keep rotating it for each and every one which is only three to six total. Uh, I gotta get my paint marker which I have on my I'm gonna mark all this 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 to this you wanna it'd just be smart to mark where it was put everything back the same for balance and fitment reasons whatever the case is uh, should help you out a lot by marking it I use a paint marker uh, seems to have a little more endurance for rubbing and this actually looks good, but I want to pull it off and double check, make sure it's not cracked and all that, because if you're going to go through pulling all this stuff off, uh, you might as well replace this if it's cracked or dry rotted in any way. So let me get to removing this. And I'll be yeah, back. I just wanted to come back real quick. This thing will focus. Jesus. While I was doing this, I would highly, highly recommend, let me see if I get it to focus. Okay, there we go. I would highly recommend using a ratchet wrench. Um, so what I'm doing is because it's tight in this, the rubber, just take this and have to keep tightening it. You could probably use a socket with extension. The sway bar is loose. But you just do that and it comes right out. So um, the sway bar is loose of course when you take the skid plate off. If you still have yours you can move it around and lift it up and all that but that's not too much of a deal if you have a ratchet wrench. Like I said two of these are facing down so able to get this one out real easy because there's a lot more clearance between the sway bar but um, 
with this one the sway bar is kind of right behind it but ratchet wrench makes quick work so now I'm gonna try to break this one free which is not part of the shaft and then hopefully get that one actually I'll try to take it out and then then I'll rotate it to work on the other ones all right this has been a chore and a half I haven't got the other bolts off yet but I got the shaft bolts off like I was explaining marked it there and then let's see if you can see it from this flange to there from the flange of the dry shaft to here I put two lines so I can don't get them confused other than that let's try to get this thing off it's unbolted now gonna be uh, hilarious to get out of here so it looks like I'm gonna have to take this off for sure um, kind of sucks but it is what it is so I got three more bolts to go on here to get these off and these are not fun to get off right around there pretty good so have to do that and we'll see if we can I just got it out um, mine definitely had to be replaced at one time or it's good conditions I guess no dry rot no crack nothing so it's all good there Get ready for some exercise. You put it in neutral, but it'll spin it. But then you're gonna be able to. I use ramps, so I had to put some boards there to keep the tire from spinning, so I can untorque or can uh, break loose the the bolts. I had to do both tires. Got to be solid, so I just used the ramps and then used the front. Um, jack spot there's a, a metal brace there that you can just hook on to there it is there let's try to get this thing out if we can do it with one hand yeah slid out real easy let's pull it back let's go down let's take a look at it let's see what it looks like Not too bad actually. So yep. Doesn't look too stripped to me. It's just starting it looks like. So we're gonna cut this, weld on the new one. This lines up here. So we're gonna put a light on. pretty far in there it's probably I would say three inches of splines in there at least three so I caught mine early so it's all good now but, so let me get to cut the shaft get the new one welded on gotta do the measurements and all okay what it is is the sawzall cut the front of it off and measured out 29 and 1 8 inches that's going from right here flat spot to the tip of this I put this on here flat as a reference so this end comes to 29 and 8 so the new part when I get it in here um, I'll make sure I measure it out so right now I'm just gonna take in my file clean it up make sure it's all nice and smooth and then I'm gonna clean the inside out so I'm right. gonna get doing that so I got it all cleaned up no burrs nice and smooth One piece it's a really good fit you can feel the air 
wobbly, barely moves. It's so tight, you can see it, the air pushing it. It's good fit, good quality. So we need to make this exactly 30 and the eighth, which is right there. Let me turn this measuring tape around, y'all can see. So 30.125, which is an eighth. Perfect. So I'm gonna go get my welder and I'm gonna weld this thing up. And we'll go from there. Here's the old one, by the way. This little piece is cut off. Cut it right before the weld there. Right on the that's pretty much it. I don't know if you can kind of see the shiny teeth. Mine was just starting to, to strip. So, caught it before, so the threads are still there. They're still drivable. But I'm gonna add now an extra inch, so should be a lifetime fix for this vehicle. Let me get my welder out. I got it welded on. Um, I've already checked it, rotated it and all that. It's exactly 30 and an eighth inches right on the money. I mean exact. I checked it in all three flat spots, rotated the shaft just to make sure nothing was crooked. Um, decent weld. It's not the best, but it'll do. It's welded. So now I'm just waiting for it to cool down a little bit and I'm going to spray paint that just to uh, help rust prevention. It's still going to rust, but. I'll help it out a little bit and uh, I'll start putting it back in the truck. Okay, I got it all painted up and letting it sit still cooling down. It's still kind of hot to touch. Paint won't be a problem. I used uh, just what I had, which was some wheel coating. So I just sprayed it. Get some coverage. And it's not for no car show, but so I'm about to see if it'll go in without dropping or moving the transfer case or anything like that. So the moment of truth is coming. Will it fit without doing any crazy other work? So it's been over an hour. I can get about eight inch maybe thread started but it uh it ain't gonna fit in there see it's hidden right there so it's about a quarter inch off probably see it better right there so this the dry shaft flange this is the flange for the front diff so you can see it's that far off, it needs to go up here, lengthwise. So, for Nathan's Garage and that kid guy and all them doing these X5s videos, um, I did watch a couple of theirs. They're good mechanics, good people, don't get me wrong. But, um, if I'll be the first out of all these guys, which is what pisses me off about these YouTube mechanics, is they don't show you shit um, a lot of times like this to give you a warning. Um, the one I saw, he did it off the car, telling you how to do it and all that, which is messed up for the average guy that's not going to be doing that. Um, you shouldn't do a video unless you know for sure. Or literally doing it like this to give the right information to everybody so what's gonna have to happen is I'm gonna have to probably pull the cross member support the tranny I think it's eight bolts for the transfer case to loosen those bolts to slide it back a quarter inch that I need to get this drive shaft um, 
to clear that flange because it's, it's just enough angle where the threads aren't letting it go in which really sucks so it'd been nice if I could have pivot this down just a little bit I'd be golden but because that's transfer case and tranny and the engine block and the front diff is all attached together there's no way to to do that so all I need is a quarter inch which really sucks it'll be worth it in the long run this adapter piece I mean really if yours is not bad I would still consider putting it on your to-do list because they're gonna fail with the small amount of teeth that were in there to get this done um, and you should never have to worry about it but, yep so for all the videos that were out there um, it's a complete fail that's exactly one inches um, longer welded than the original and even without the which I was kind of surprised where I had hope was looking at the thickness of this it's about an inch so I'm kind of surprised with it being exactly an inch difference with this out I still come up short on the clearance here and I do exactly one inch so for all you guys looking at doing this um, either take a quarter inch off of your weld which you're gonna lose teeth so and you should have a problem getting it in but doing a full inch you can run into this problem right here or with this being off if it can't clear this right here if this piece this the bottom of this right here the bottom if that can't clear this dry shaft's gonna be at just enough angle where those teeth aren't gonna go in and your SOL and a lot more work to come to fix that so what I thought about which is what I should have done was after I cut it I should have just put the piece in there attached the dry shaft completely and just welded it with it in place that's what I should have did so if you're doing this I would recommend doing that just take it off the car like I did get it cut cleaned up all that good stuff you don't even really have to worry about measuring it at that point get it all bolted up back here permanently um, you'll slide your adapter in which you can actually slide it in the tube further and then pull it out slide it in where it needs to go which actually you'd probably benefit even more because you'd be able to sink it as far as you can get all of new teeth and then weld it that's what I would do that's what I should have did but I was a victim of watching the youtubers on here were doing this never really showed or said too much about what really went on so for uh, a real situation this is it right here um, look forward to doing a lot more work to get that clearance when I should have just did the well with it up here which you know with it in neutral you can just do your quarter well spin it quarter well would have been perfect so well, I'm gonna call it quits for today I'll be back at it tomorrow there it is an update it's in all the way more threads than normal all the threads are in I did exactly what I said which I wish I would have done in the first place I had to grind off the welds the weld that I did so I would slide put the shaft in this can slide into the tube far enough obviously you can see all that grinding the slid all the way in so I was able to get it in the splines get all that mounted and then this was pressed in all the way so it's got 
threads pretty far. Um, should last a lifetime. At this point now, I just have to re-weld it because right now it's not welded. This tube uh, will spin on this. But So if you're going to do this, avoid any big headaches. Cut your shaft. Get all the burrs off. Take your new piece. Slide it in. Make sure you can move it. Slide it all the way in. Put the shaft up before you bolt it all the way in. Just kind of snug it. Make sure this is slid all the way in. And weld it on the car. If not, you're going to lose about a quarter inch of threads. So you're only going to have three quarter inch if you're lucky of new threads. But that's really not smart. Or you're going to have to do the transfer case slide it back to where you got room you can avoid all that crap if you just <clears throat> keep this loose get the shaft in there then pull this piece you know slide it in all the way and then snug the bolt and then do your final weld and you're done you don't have to do all this other shit transfer case all that so and you'll get now at least an inch or more of new threads so that's how you do it there's no way this was 29 and an eighth and at exactly an inch which I showed you was 30 and an eighth there's no possible way to get this in without damaging this grinding it whatever there's no way to do it unless you pull you can do the nine bolts or whatever on this transfer case loosen them up about a half inch slide this back but to do that you would have to undo all your heat shields you have to unbolt this whole cross member and you have to support the tranny <clears throat> which i see people do it by the pad never do that i see it time and time again it's the worst thing you could do supported by the bell housing I even see mechanics that have been doing shit for years doing that and you gotta think about it if these bolts on this pad are inch pounds that's next to nothing it's a quarter turn past tight pretty much because you don't want to over squeeze the gasket well, how much you think all this weighs with this fluid and you're going to hold this back in with this pad pushing you're going to over compress your gasket you're probably going to cause a leak you could even warp your freaking flange it's just not smart to do always try to use solid if you're going to do it that way but to avoid all that crap don't weld it get it cut get it cleaned up slide it in push it all the way it'll work and slide it you're good you actually you'll get more threads this way too it doesn't matter because no matter what you're gonna have to take off your transfer case to get this out anyway even if it was an inch longer so you're better off just doing this and never have a problem so now i'm gonna get to welding it finalize it so let me get to working